So um, I would like to start by yeah, that's fine, thank you. Uh, I'd like to start by uh, saying thank you for the opportunity to come here and present results from this study, uh, which is part of my PhD thesis. It's a study on retinal oximetry in diabetic retinopathy with focus on regional variations. And um, <coughs> sorry. Yeah. Well, on the left side, you see the diabetic maculopathy, uh, which is uh, characterized by a macular hyperperfusion and possibly an increased oxygenation. And on the right side, you see the proliferative diabetic retinopathy uh, stage, where you have a, a which is preceded by uh, capillary occlusions in the retinal periphery and a decreased oxygenation. We do not know, however, to what extent uh, these, uh, this uh, regional distribution of retinopathy lesions is related to disturbances in the, or variations in the oxygenation. In Aarhus, we have a possibility of elucidating that question because we do oximetry performed as part of the routine evaluation of diabetic patients in our clinic. And we use the Oximap T1 equipment from Reykjavik. Um, and in this study, 30 normal persons were included, as well as 30 successic, uh, successive persons with um, maculopathy requiring treatment, and as well as 30 uh, successive persons with uh, a proliferative diabetic retinopathy requiring treatment. The background characteristics on these uh, persons uh, is shown here. Uh, it can be interesting to see that the difference in diabetes duration was uh, it was longer for the group of proliferative patients and the age groups were also uh, different for all three groups. When we do oximetry in Denmark on our patients, we take an image with the optic disc in the center and we take an image with the upper temporal uh, in the uh, arcade in the center. And um, in this study, I analyzed these two different images from each patient. <coughs> On the left side, you will see uh, an image of the optic disc in the center. And analysis was done in this way. One ma the major arteriole and the major venole in each quadrant was um, chosen and analyzed to assess the difference between the four quadrants. And to elucidate on the difference between the macula and the peripheral region, uh, I chose, uh, I first defined the upper temporal arcade uh, vessels and chose the most proximal branch going uh, in the peripheral and macula uh, direction. Um, shown here, one in the macula, uh, one extending in the, into the macula region and one extending um, peripherally as well as the adjacent proximal segment on the ar uh, arcade and the uh, segment uh, just at the distal continuation. <coughs> the results from the uh, peripapillary vessels. If you start by looking at the saturation, the saturation parameters are shown here, the results on the left side and the diameters on the right side. And to start by looking at saturation for the arterioles, if you focus on the group of normal persons, you can see that, and it's very hard to see perhaps, but we have, I have the four quadrants listed here, and the uh, highest saturation was found in the upper nasal uh, quadrant followed by the lower nasal quadrant, and followed by again the upper temporal, and lowest was the uh, lower temporal region. Um, this pattern was uh, the same for all three groups, uh, but the saturation was higher for the group of proliferative diabetic retinopathy patients. When looking at the saturation for the venoles, there was a similar pattern, and again, an increased saturation overall for the two groups of uh, diabetic patients. And it was interesting to see that there was no difference in the AV uh, oxygen uh, difference between the four, it, among the four quadrants, but there was a lower AV difference in the group of maculopathy patients mm -hmm. than the other, uh, other two groups. And when looking at the diameters, I could see that differences in diameter values could not explain uh, these uh, patterns that were just talked about. 
<coughs> so conclusions for a hand on the peripapillary vessels was that the decreasing oxygen saturation from the upper nasal down to the lower nasal, upper temporal, and lower temporal vessels. And this was uh, a, a confirmation of reports from Gay here in 2012 and from Yanni in 2014. And patients with uh, maculopathy and proliferative diabetic retinopathy have a higher saturation values, but the regional pattern of uh, variation in the saturation was the same. So, to so the results from the macular versus the peripheral vessels, again, it's very hard for you to see, so I'll go through it with you. Uh, if you see the saturation pr uh, results are listed here and the amateur results are listed here. And if we start by looking at the saturation for the arterioles, they're divided into the macula and the peripheral branches. It says branch here and it says the distal <coughs> continuation here. So when looking at the saturation for the arterioles, we can see that there is a sort of a pattern uh, or it appears that the um, saturation in the distal continuation is higher than it is in the branching. And this was significant for the peripheral branches of the two diabetic groups, uh, maculopathies and the proliferative group. When looking at the venules, uh, again, they were divided up into the macula uh, extending branches and the peripheral extending branches. And here it is uh, uh, and again, you have the distal continuation here, and you have the branch there. And it is uh, apparent to see that there was a higher saturation in the branches extending into the macular area than in the distal continuation. And this was not uh, the same for the peripheral uh, branching. You could also see that the uh, macular branches had a higher saturation than the uh, uh, peripheral branches. And again, this could not be explained by differences in the diameters. So conclusions on this part of the study was that the pattern of the higher uh, venous oxygen saturation uh, in macula than, than in peripheral venules confirmed the pattern described by Heitmann Safin in 2012. And patients with uh, maculopathy and proliferative diabetic retinopathy have a higher saturation value, but the macula versus peripheral variation in saturation is the same. So overall conclusions on this study is that the Retinal oxygen saturation is increased in diabetic patients. And patients with um, diabetic maculopathy and prolif proliferative diabetic retinopathy show the same pattern of variation in oxygen saturation among nasal and temporal arcades, as well as among the macular and the peripheral vessels. The regional differences in uh, retinopathy lesions in diabetic maculopathy and proliferative diabetic retinopathy cannot be explained by regional differences in the uh, retinal oxygen saturation. 